Welcome back fellow learners to a journey of module 10 on how to be safe at scaffolds. First, let's rewind for a quick recap of module 9. Hydraulic power tools, flexing their muscles with the force of hydraulic pressure, making a mark in heavy-duty applications like hydraulic jacks and presses. Gas-powered tools, echoing the power of gasoline or alter- Now, as we gear up for module 10. I invite you to join us by hitting that subscribe button and ringing the bell icon. But, a word of advice, make sure you've caught up on the gems shared in the previous modules. Welcome to Module 10, an exciting and informative world of scaffolds. Picture yourself on a scaffold today, about to embark on your work at a considerable height without any safety precautions. Suddenly, you feel the ground slipping beneath you, and the terrifying reality of losing your balance takes hold. Now, just imagine if you had the proper protection in place, a safety net that could prevent this impending hazard, moments like these remind us of the critical importance of safety measures, especially when working at heights. In this segment, we will delve into the essentials of scaffold safety, offering you a comprehensive understanding of the precautions required. In this journey, we will discuss diverse types of scaffolds, setting the stage for a safer work environment. This module unfolds across three vital lessons. First, we'll immerse ourselves in introduction to scaffolds. We'll then navigate the overview of OSHA directives for the construction of scaffolds. Lastly, we'll engage in a discussion on scaffold safety measures. Let's acquaint ourselves with key terms that will be our companions throughout this journey. Ever heard of bearer, put log? Imagine a horizontal transverse scaffold member supported by ledgers or runners, it's the backbone upon which the scaffold platform rests, seamlessly connecting scaffold uprights, posts, poles, and similar members. Now think of a bosun's chair. A single point adjustable suspension scaffold, a specialized seat or sling designed to cradle and support one employee comfortably in a sitting position. Say hello to body harness. Visualize a well-designed set of straps securing an employee and distributing fall arrest forces over thighs, pelvis, waist, chest, and shoulders, it's more than just a harness, it's a safety cocoon with means for attachment to other components of a personal fall arrest system. Think of brace. A rigid connection, a stabilizing force that holds one scaffold member in a fixed position concerning another member or the structure itself, it's the unsung hero ensuring stability and reliability. What is a chimney hoist? Imagine a multi-point adjustable suspension scaffold specially crafted to provide access to work inside chimneys, it's your vertical companion for work in unique spaces. Zooming into coupler. Picture a device with a simple yet crucial role, locking together the tubes of a tube and coupler scaffold, it's the silent guardian ensuring the scaffold's structural integrity. Now, crawling board. Imagine a supported scaffold resembling a plank with strategically spaced and secured cleats. This is your sure-footed companion on sloped surfaces, like roofs, ensuring stability while you navigate. What is the maximum intended load? Consider the total load, people, equipment, tools, materials, and other anticipated loads. This measures what a scaffold or its components can bear at any time. Now outrigger. Visualize the structural support of a supported scaffold working to increase the base width, providing essential support and stability. Finally, outrigger beam, thrust out. Imagine the structural member extending the scaffold's point of attachment outward and away from the structure, it's the architectural ballet, ensuring equilibrium and support. Welcome to first lesson about introduction to scaffolds. Scaffolds are the unsung heroes of the construction industry. Imagine them as the backbone, the silent support system that stands tall, quite literally, in the world of building, maintenance, and repair projects. These temporary structures play a pivotal role, providing the vital support and access workers need when working on tasks such as painting, welding, 
or installing structures at elevated heights. Let's explore some common types of scaffolds that form the scaffolding landscape. First, frame scaffolding. It is a versatile structure composed of vertical and horizontal frames, creating a sturdy foundation for various construction projects. Suspended scaffold, or swing scaffold. This unique scaffold hangs from a fixed overhead support, using ropes or flexible means, offering a platform supported by two bearers. Cup lock scaffolding. Known for its speed of assembly and adaptability, it utilizes a unique locking system with horizontal and vertical components. Catenary scaffolds. Designed to follow the contours of a structure, providing flexibility for irregular shapes or surfaces, it is ideal for unique architectural features. Mobile scaffolding. Mounted on wheels or casters, this scaffold allows easy movement and is perfect for projects requiring mobility. Tube and coupler scaffold. While it offers versatility by being buildable in various directions and combinations, its adaptability also presents a challenge in construction. Moving on to scaffolds tailored for specific jobs. Trestle scaffold. It is a low, portable scaffold with supporting legs, perfect for interior work or tasks at lower heights. Cantilever scaffold. Extending horizontally from a structure, supported on one end, it's the go-to choice when obstacles or restrictions exist at the base. Birdcage scaffold. Surrounding large vertical structures provides complete access to multiple levels, a common sight in projects with vertical cores. H-frame scaffolding. A grid structure of vertical and horizontal frames is often used in masonry work or where a large platform is needed. System scaffold. This scaffold uses pre-engineered components with standardized connections to allow versatile configurations, ideal for complex or large-scale projects. Here are some study questions to test your understanding. It's time to identify the hazard. Have you found it? Comment below. Now second lesson about overview of OSHA directives for the construction of scaffolds. Let's dive into the essential points that form the backbone of safety and compliance. Regulations for two-point scaffold. Unless explicitly stated otherwise, the regulations outlined for the two-point scaffold extend to all other types of suspension scaffolds. This ensures a universal approach to safety across various scaffold configurations. Fall arrest systems and guardrails. On any scaffold expected to be elevated more than six feet above the ground, it's imperative to provide both fall arrest systems and guardrails. This dual protection mechanism is a critical safeguard for workers at heights. Clearance from electrical lines. Maintaining a minimum clearance from electrical lines is crucial. For lines up to 50 kV, the clearance is 10 feet, unless insulated and carrying less than 300 volts, in which case, a minimum clearance of 3 feet is required. Catenary Scaffolds Guidelines Catenary scaffolds, with their unique characteristics, pose specific requirements. Limiting the interconnected platforms to two ensures structural integrity. As guardrails are not standard, all employees must be protected with personal fall arrest systems. Weight load and occupancy limits. 
With a maximum weight load of 500 pounds, catenary scaffolds dictate that no more than two people should be on the scaffold simultaneously. Additionally, the fully planked platform must maintain no more than one inch gaps and remain within 14 inches of the structure being worked on. Maximum Platform Height Platforms can be placed up to a maximum height of 20 feet from the supported base, ensuring a safe working environment. Horizontal Movement and Pump Jack Guidelines Unless designed for the purpose, scaffolds should not be moved horizontally while employees are on them. Pump jack wood must be straight-grained and free of shakes, dead knots, and defects. As we conclude this segment, here are some study questions. Now it's time to see workers on scaffolds and comment on whether it is the right way to work on scaffolds. Let's shift our focus to the final lesson, a crucial exploration of scaffold safety measures. One out of every three deaths in construction results from fatal falls. Let's dive into the key points of safety measures. At first manufacturer consistency. If you have scaffolds from two or more manufacturers, here's a crucial rule. Do not, under any circumstances, try to mix and match the components. Consistency in components ensures structural integrity and, ultimately, the safety of every worker on that scaffold. Now metal consistency. A golden rule, do not use different metals for the elements of the scaffold, this seemingly simple guideline is a fundamental step in ensuring the stability and reliability of the scaffold structure. Most important is platform stability. Ensuring platform stability is not just a guideline, it's a pledge to provide a secure foundation for every task performed at heights. A stable platform is the cornerstone of safety in scaffold usage. Guardrails and tow boards, more than just protective barriers. They are the frontline defenders against falls offering a secure perimeter that safeguards every worker navigating the scaffold. Equally important fall protection. It is not just a requirement, it's a lifeline, it's the assurance that every worker is equipped with the necessary measures to prevent falls and mitigate the impact if one occurs. Ever heard of access? It may seem like a simple concept, but it's a critical factor. Safe and efficient access ensures that every ascent and descent on the scaffold is a secure journey. Finally, post-fall impact inspection. Any systems involved in a fall impact must be treated with utmost caution. These systems, having arrested a falling worker, should be removed immediately and inspected thoroughly before reuse. Safety is not just about prevention, it's also about post-incident diligence. Here are some study questions to deepen your understanding. Now, let's take a moment to understand the gravity of these incidents by exploring some of the most common scaffold injuries. The human brain is our most precious asset, and any injury to it is a matter of great concern. Scaffold accidents can lead to traumatic brain injuries, impacting lives in profound ways. The spine is the pillar of our body's stability. Scaffold incidents sometimes result in spinal cord injuries, altering lives and affecting mobility. Scaffold accidents can, unfortunately, lead to amputations, emphasizing the need for stringent safety measures. While bones may heal, the process can be painful and life-altering. 
scaffold accidents often result in broken bones, underscoring the importance of prevention and safety. Even seemingly minor injuries like lacerations can have lasting effects. The truth is, with the right precautions, serious injuries and fatal falls can be prevented. Here are some indispensable tips. The bedrock of scaffold safety lies in compliance, stay abreast of both current and proposed OSHA regulations for working with scaffolds. Assure that the design and construction of scaffolds align with OSHA requirements, this meticulous attention to detail ensures that every scaffold is a testament to safety and adherence to industry standards. Keep scaffold suspension ropes and body belts or harness system drop lines protected from hot or corrosive substances. Your safety is in your hands, literally, where personal fall protection equipment, it's not just a requirement, it's your shield against potential falls, offering a crucial layer of protection. Before each use, conduct a thorough inspection, inspect all scaffolds, scaffold components, and personal fall protection equipment. Utilize structurally sound portions of buildings or other structures to anchor drop lines for body belt or harness systems and tiebacks for suspension scaffold support devices, a strong anchor is the anchor of safety. Follow scaffold manufacturer's guidance to the letter, whether it's assembly, rigging, or usage, adhering to the manufacturer's recommendations ensures that every scaffold operates at its optimal level of safety. And here's your chance, got any queries or thoughts to share, don't hesitate, the comment section below is all yours. As we gear up for module 11, brace yourselves for even more excitement ahead. Remember to subscribe and press the bell icon to stay updated, until then, take care and stay safe.